Hello again, swimmers. Making another video reacting to the recently uh, webinar that was uh, uploaded by uh, Freedom Faster Live. So before I start, I want to give a big shout out to uh, Freedom Faster, David Artlook, um, Chloe Sudan, Tyler Clary. You guys are doing an awesome job uh, making it happen for the swimming community. Uh, sharing all this information gives me as a coach on all of the swimmers in the United States, or all over the world that speaks English, um, a lot of information um, that we can actually use it to get better. Um, so yeah, I wanna, this, this latest uh, uh, webinar was about breaking down streamlines and underwater dolphin kicks. So this is a huge topic. This is like, for me, the most important fundamental in swimming, competitive swimming. Um, if you want to compete and get very good at swimming and get very fast, the most important aspect to pay attention is how you can use the underwater dolphin kicks to get faster. Um, for those of you that doesn't know, uh, in the recent years, this has been a uh, competitive rule internationally about underwater dolphin kicks. You cannot exceed 15 meters on the water in order to compete in a swimming event. And one of the reasons is underwater dolphin kick can be faster than actually swimming on top of the water. And we have seen that before in Olympic Games where swimmers have tried to go on the water all the way or more than 15 meters and they end up swimming a small portion of the race. In order to avoid that kind of uh, advantages, they created new rules, 15 meter rules. That's the reason why you cannot exceed that uh, amount of distance in swimming, competitive swimming. So this um, live uh, webinar was held by uh, Tyler Clary. I want to thank him again for all the effort that he's doing. And um, clinic, clinicians, uh, Marie, Marina Spodani. Marina Spodani is a ex-swimmer, graduated from Arizona State University back in 2016, team captain for the women's team, uh, specialties in 150 freestyle. So I researched Marina's best times and it show up at 2284 and 50 freestyle in yards and a 2568 in long course, a 4948 in yards and a 5568 in long course. So that shows you Marina is a very fast swimmer in the 50 and 100 free. And as Marina was uh, sharing her swimming experience, she was not necessarily a good uh, puller, a, a good swimmer, uh, pulling she was awesome on the water so that's the reason why she was uh, making this presentation for us breaking down streamlines on the water dolphin is this uh, a presentation that actually she did um the other swimmer is christopher reed christopher reed is one of the best backstrokers in the world right now is um uh, south african uh record holder 100 200 back uh he swam at rio 2016 100 back he, he, he came to the United States to study at the University of Alabama. I make some research and uh, Christopher's 100 back in yards is a 4617, a 139, 200 yard backstrokes. And yeah, uh, he was telling us like he was not too much into on the water dolphin kicks when he came from South Africa. He was more in swimming. He was only training in 50 meters. Uh, 50 meter pools. So I know a little bit about that because I come from Puerto Rico and we mainly have 50 meter pools. So all of the improvement that we do internationally is more about the swimming part, not that much on the on the water dolphin kicks part. Uh, but you don't have to uh, be a genius to know that every time the Olympic Games comes, you can see awesome performance and swimmers that usually wins use the underwater dolphin kicks in their advantages 
in 50 meter pools. So when Christopher came to the United States, he was having that kind of a um, in right away impression that he has to improve those uh, on the water dolphin kicks in order to get very good at this. So, um, so I have like a lot of notes from that um, webinar I want to share with you guys. The percentage of swimming part that has to be made in long course versus short course is actually improve, um, improve the, the swimming, um, the, the time that you can actually get by getting those dolphin kicks very fast in the water. In the case of Chris, he dropped it two seconds in a hundred back, but hundred back so just by improving the, the water dolphin kicks. Just to ha ha just to give you guys an idea, when you get to a very high level of swimming, like the level that Chris is, like world, world class level, it's very difficult to drop time. And for him to say dropping two seconds only by improving the underwater dolphin kicks, that means that it's very, very important. Um, ankle flexibility. Ankle flexibility, I, I, I talk about this in the last video, is one of the good skills that is gonna improve your kicking, overall kicking. So if you have your ankles going up and down like this, some kind of propulsion is gonna go up and down. But if you have more flexibility, the water is gonna be pushed back and your body is gonna be pushed the opposite way. So in order just to kick up and down and having that stiffness in your ankles, you have to have some flexibility to help um, achieve the speed and the propulsion you want to have in order to move faster. So ankle flexibility for underwater and any kind of kicking. So um, bobby line, straight line, the hands has to be pointed in the direction that actually we want to go. So if your hands are pointing down, you're going down. Hands are pointing up, you're going up. Makes sense. But you actually have to think about those details in order to have that awesome body line and streamline. Toes, also important. Your toes has to be pointed. If you're trying to go this way and your toes are like this, then this amount of drag that you're creating here is not gonna help you go fast. So the toes and the hands has to be in a very line position. The body line has to be very, very, uh, very perfectly in order to get better. Uh, a good drill, and I know most of you guys have done before, it's, it's an awesome, they, they share with us that it's a good drill, is um, just push up the wall with a streamline and just try to get the more distance that you can and without dolphin kicking. That way, that, that tells you how far you can get. And if you start practicing that, each day you're gonna get better at that. So just having an awesome streamline without any effort, just going farther that you can. Um, that reminds me that um, in swimming we have um, distance per stroke drills. Marina shared with us that she does uh, distance per kick stroke. So she is such a powerful kicker that she can do a 25 yards on the water dolphin kick with only three dolphin kicks to cross the pool, 25 yards. Um, so that tells you in that level of swimming, that amount of precision on the details of the dolphin kicks, having that powerful of a dolphin kick and then resetting her body in order to get more distance per kick to the point they only needed three dolphin kicks to cross the pool in a 25 yard pool. That's awesome. That's awesome. And I don't know how tall she is, but I think she's not that tall. That makes it even more impressive. So yeah, when we go back to the pool, we should practice that. We should, uh, wear fins and try to uh, go across the pool and count how many dolphin kicks and try to go for less and less. 
that is good, that's a good starting point because knowing how to uh, develop the amount of power that you can develop in your kick is gonna help you go faster. So another thing that we're um, discussing is the up kick and the down kick. It's not only one way, uh, you have to use both in order to have a more effective kick. So um, in the presentation, Marina shared with, uh, with us the up kick, you use lower back muscles, hamstring, and glutes. And for the down kick, you use abs, hip flexors, and quads. Um, so there's a lot of muscles involved into this. For the dry land exercise that I'm sharing with you guys, I try to include exercise that help you get stronger at these areas. Again, lower back, hamstrings, glutes, abs, hip flexors, and quads. All are needed in order to have an awesome, fast uh, kick. In this case, we're talking about underwater dolphin kicks. Um, another, another part of the presentation, um, are you a passive or an active swimmer of the walls? And the reason they bring this is because you can either use the walls to rest or to go faster. Um, I, I think we all know where this is going. So if you use the walls to get faster, you have to have the mentality to get to that wall and get fast spin, fast on the water dolphin to get out, you're gonna be awesome on the walls. If you practice that every day, if you practice that, if you use that as a goal to get very good at that, you know, where you're going to end up having an awesome swimming just by having awesome the water dolphin kicks. Um, so one way to incorporate this, because this is more than physical, this is a mental effort. On the water dolphin kick is not that big of a deal for your body. It's more about mental preparation. It's more about setting your mind into every, every day having a goal or improving and the way to start is let's say you want to do three dolphin kicks of each wall on the entire practice once you get that goal try to go for another one sometimes you're gonna fail it's not gonna be easy there's a lot of things involved but it's more mentally than physically and, and it's not me that says that and i think you guys understand what i'm trying to trying to say here um you start with three, you build your way into more. Um, again, this is not a physical effort, it's more a mental effort. Streamline, as Marina says in the webinar, streamline is a building block for every awesome swim. So if you see, if you see a swimmer doing a great swim and you notice that they were not as many good on the water dolphin kicks in that swim, I think we can agree that that swim can be better. That swim can be better at some point. So every time you see an awesome on the water dolphin kick where the swimmer can pull away off the group, of the swimmer next to them in each wall, that, that makes it awesome. So again, streamline is a building block for every awesome swim. Amazing, um, amazing swims are made with great streamline. Okay, uh, so Chris shared with us that he, when he came from South Africa, he went from eight meters on the waters in each wall, in it, in each turn, to eighteen meters. So that's that show you that 10 meter on the water gain for him has made a lot of difference. Um, experiment with a lot of different ways until you find what works better for you. This is true for all swimming techniques. You as a swimmer, you have a duty of 
looking for what works better for you. So in this webinar, Chris is a six, six and a half swimmer and Marina is a very short swimmer. Both of them sharing their ex, um, experience about um, uh, on the water dolphin kicks. So uh, experiment in different ways because they have different ways of dolphin kickings. Uh, we saw a video of Marina and she does a very small and powerful dolphin kicks. In the other hand, Chris has a very big and powerful dolphin kicks. Well, it takes Marina 15 dolphin kicks to the, get to the 15, takes only seven dolphin kicks to Chris. So that doesn't mean they're gonna do the same, but they have to work in the same thing and try in different things. For example, Marina used to uh, work with the tempo trainer. A tempo trainer is a small device you can put it in your cap on your on your goggles and it makes some noise, say makes some beeps. And you can set up the tempo trainer to go faster if you want it. Uh, usually a tempo trainer is to uh, help a swimmer know their pace. Usually distance swimmers use it, but she's using it for kicking. So every time the beep goes, she kicks. Beep, 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 beep. So that makes her uh, dolphin kicks um, uh, get faster in the way that she wants to, to do. Um, program your mind send the right message in order to have the right muscle memory. This, this was Tyler Clary's um, advice. Pro program your mind in order to have the right message to your body and then you can have the right muscle memory. Muscle memory has nothing to do with memory. Muscle memory is what your muscles do in automatic mode in order to swim. So in order to have that mindset in send the right message in this case specifically the right technique so you can achieve the right swimming in this case on the water dolphin gig so trying a small one a bigger one using more of your lower body using more of your core streamline head position try everything try everything in order to know for you what works better for you so the spike of speed that you get off the walls is going to determine how good you can be. Again, the spike of speed that you can achieve off the walls. So every time you get into the wall, you make the flip turn and you go off the wall, that speed that you get right there is going to determine, determine how good of a swimmer you can be. So just imagine this, getting good at the underwaters is going to help your swimming like, like a lot. So getting that speed of the wall is like what you actually have to get. Okay. Um, be, be a master of a single detail each day. Chris was sharing that he's in his mindset of training every day, he wants to be the master of each detail. He has been working a lot on the water dolphin kick. That means that he, every time he gets to uh, the training, he wants to be a very good at the water dolphin kicks. So that's a good advice for an Olympian. Um, make it fun. It's not a chore. It's not something that you have to do. It's something that actually you want to do in order to have a more exciting swimming. That mindset right there is gonna change everything for you. Again, this is smaller men mental effort than a physical effort. Okay, uh, example from uh, Marina. Pretend that the bottom of the pool is a trampoline. Every time you kick down, your hips go up. So you want to go like, Imagine that, you wanna imagine like you're kicking down a trampoline and that's gonna bring you up again and you have two trampolines, one up, one down and you're in the middle, just done the water dolphin kick. That, that's a fun way to approach to have a good underwater dolphin kick. Also the amplitude, the amplitude is how big of a dolphin kick you should do. In Marina's case, she wants to go over her, uh, outside of the body frame 
because she has a small body frame. Also, you have to consider how big of a leg you have. You want to make a big and powerful one or a small one or a medium sized one. I have swimmers that we have tried that before and they have figured out which kind of dolphin kick that is better for them. That is very important to figure out at the early age. And you should know that if you're growing, if you're uh, uh, having a like, like, yeah, like a bigger body frame than before, maybe that might change too. So it's a constantly uh, ensuring that you know what you're doing. It takes a lot of experimentation. Is So let's step back for a second. This is not rocket science. This is, you want your body to go on the water dolphin kick as fast as you can. In order to achieve to that point, a lot of experimentation has to take place. And I think I have uh, uh, make a lot of examples about this. Bigger, smaller head, uh, arms, body position, everything should be in place. Um, know, know your number of dolphin kicks to the 15 meters. The 15 meter marks in swimming is very important. As I said before, that's the longest that you can get on, on the water. So knowing how many dolphin kicks you have to do on the water, that way you avoid yourself to getting the cue at meets because you went longer than, than, than 15 meters. Or if you want to do um, times, uh, you want to get faster at the 15 meter, you should know that X amount of dolphin kicks at this, at this effort is going to lead you to have 15 meters. Okay, um, Okay. first, dual meet for Chris in the United States. This is a example that he used. He swam uh, from, for Alabama, a 200-yard backstroke. It was like two weeks after he arrived from uh, South, um, South Africa. And he went 10 dolphin, 10 dolphin kicks off the start. And then eight dolphin kicks on the turn, and then six, and then less, all the way to zero dolphin kicks in the last turn. He went on 49-2 in the first 100, and he ended up doing a 145. It's a pretty fast 200 back. Um, but in order for him to go from a 145 to a 136, those dolphin kicks, those on the water dolphin kicks were key for him to go 11 seconds faster. Um, there were a discussion about, about nose clips, nose clips, the attachment that you put in, in your nose to avoid the water going inside of your nose. Um, I've seen that uh, device used a lot of years ago when I was a swimmer. A uh, very good swimmer, a friend of mine, a backstroker, used to have a nose clip because he was getting a lot of water to the nose, which is not a fun thing to have. Me, I used to put my uh, my nose like this. I, I close my uh, nasal channels and no water can go in. But not everybody uh, uh, is able to do that. Um, uh, Taylor, Taylor Clary was... Uh, explaining how it can be useful for swimmers. So when you dive in, you have all this oxygen in your lungs, that air is going to make you uh, go uh, above the water faster just because that buoyancy that you have inside is going to make you go up. Uh, instead of a swimmer that's just blowing bubbles to the nose where they dive in, that make the swimmers go low in the water because they have less buoyancy, they have less air. So that could be another um, advantage if you know how to use it. And he also said before competing and swimming with a nose clip, you should train with a nose clip. That's a great advice, even with goggles. You never use swimming goggles, new ones, for the first time at a swim meet. You should also uh, train with them before you actually want to use something at a swim meet. Yeah, uh, Tyler was saying that he he used to do, in terms of underwater dolphin kicks, nine, eight, seven, and eight. That's uh, underwater dolphin kicks in each wall. Marina, shorter swimmer, more dolphin kicks. He was she was going for eleven, twelve dolphin kicks. Very even number for her. And Chris is going for seven, five, five. 
and five, and his goal is to get to eight dolphin cakes. So he has big plans into improving even more in those dolphin cakes. We're talking about one of the best backstrokers in the planet right now, and he has big plans to keep improving those on the water dolphin cakes. Um, a little bit better in each wall is a uh, one of the best ways to improve time in the distance swims. So if you're a 400 swimmer and above and you have a goal to drop time, go for improvement on the walls. Yes, we do a lot of pacing, but that pacing can be improved by having a faster wall. Just imagine you dropping half a second in each wall in the mile, you're gonna drop 15 seconds easily because that's the best approach for a distance swimmers to get um so in my experience as a swimmer underwater dolphin kicks play a lot of uh, uh high importance in my swimming I, I grew up being a breaststroker then i switched to backstroke and then to butterfly end up being a decent imer um and I, I spend a lot of time on the water dolphin kick. Sometimes it was not even training. It was just me trying to get into the pool, any pool that I have a chance to get into and work in details. And on the water dolphin kick was one of those things. So yeah, I wanna see all of the swimmers working hard on that aspect is very, very important. Again, for me, it's one of the most important fundamentals in swimming. So we should uh, work on that and have that in our goals, get daily goals about doing awesome on the water dolphin kicks. Guys, um, I just uh, opened this uh, YouTube channel for you guys to share all the information. You can go over to my channel. You can uh, like, subscribe, and comment. You have questions, you want, you have a, you want to know a specific answer for you write me a comment and i will be more than more than glad to uh share with you what i think we you should do yeah so everybody stay safe everybody uh stay healthy and hopefully hopefully we can see you soon bye